Hello everyone, Amanda here, thanks for joining me. So as promised, I'm doing a tutorial on the beautiful um, note card gift set. So this is using my digital collection, the link is in the description box below um, if you'd like to purchase it, but you can obviously use any products, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make one of the cards and then I'm going to show you completely how to make the box and in case you didn't see the earlier video where I um, showcase these it opens like so we've got this beautiful shaped box and inside are 12 note cards and each one shows a month you know the 12 months of the year and then there's 12 envelopes okay so let's get started so we're going to make the box first then the card because the card's easier so you're going to need two pieces of cardstock um, so the first one is for the main component of the box and this measures eight and a quarter by nine and a half that's for the box and then to make the lid which we'll add on separately this measures four and a half by five and five eighths okay I will leave the measurements again over on my coffee I will do a post which will have this video on and underneath will be the measurements okay let's get started so on the long side we're going to score at one we just use the smaller end. One inch, two inch, seven and a half, and eight and a half. Then turn it anti clockwise, so you're turning it to your left, and then you've got the short end which measures eight and a quarter. So on this side, you want to score at two and a half. And three and a half. <laughs> Two and a half and three and a half, yeah. Okay, move that to one side and get your flap. So on the short side of the flap, so that is the five and five eighths, on the four and a half inch section, you want to score at half an inch and one and a half. and set that to one side whilst we work on the main box part. Right, so what you want to do first of all is um, fold and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, so fold them and burnish. Neat as possible, <laughs> you'll get nicer results if it's all done carefully and neatly. Make sure your hands are clean if you're using with white card. You don't have to use white card like me, you can use any colour. It's just what I've got plenty of. And make sure your bone folder's clean. And I'm only saying it because I have messed up my card because I've got ink on my hands or ink on my tools and then you're starting again. Right, so that's all scored and burnished. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut some sections away. As you can see here, you've got two score lines either side there, two small boxes either side, and two more rectangles either side. So I'm going to mark which bits we're going to cut away. So we're going to cut both of the rectangles at either side of there. And the shorter thing, the shorter part here we're calling the bottom, and the longer part we're going to call the top. That's actually the back of the box, and this is going to be the front part that folds up, just so you can visualise. Okay, now where you've got the two small boxes either side, okay, we're going to remove the most outside box. So on that one and that one. Okay, it's as simple as that. So then go in with some nice sharp scissors. Now, whilst you're removing these two boxes here, you can cut all the way across the two boxes to this line here, and all the way across the two boxes to this line here, then cut that one away and leave that one attached here. Let me show you. Just saves you going back and, and redoing it. So, you were cutting all the way across to the second scar line on both of the boxes, And then we are cutting the first one totally away. Okay, 
and then these these small ones these are going to fold in okay make sure you've cut right up to the score line so that it's not tight and it folds in neatly okay let me just give it an extra snip okay then you want to notch so notch is going in at an angle and just cutting a sliver off and what that does is it helps us fold it in easier so it doesn't catch when we're gluing it together and so the box goes together nicer okay and then down here you want to remove these two rectangles so I'm going to do that down here so I can see what I'm doing because the light that I have to use so that the videos are nice and bright um, are not helpful on white card okay remove that so I've just got some little tiny leftover pieces there that haven't come away nicely get rid of those or they'll peek out and look unsightly so you've got this, okay? Now I can see here I've not cut straight on that score line. You don't want any score line left, so I'm just going to go back in and just trim it the same as that. So I'm going to hold it towards me so I can see better because that light, it really isn't working in my favour. And I'm going to do it a bit quicker, but you just do it exactly the same, okay? Cut that little box away. And then notch and I use small scissors it's better if you can use larger scissors um, with larger scissors I just can't cut straight so that's why I'm using these little dinky ones and because they're lovely and sharp so that's that notched so now all I need to do is cut these two rectangles away there we go not that I'm a perfectionist normally, but when it comes to boxes, it has to be right. So now what you're going to do is you're going to do this section. So this is going to be your flap. It's going to attach to the back. So fold and burnish your score marks. Okay. Now this has been made ever so slightly, like one eighth of an inch larger than the box. When you attach it, you need to centre it. And the reason I've done that is so that when the lid is down, it actually covers the whole entire front of the box and you haven't got a gap. Okay, so it is slightly larger. Now at this point, if you want to round any of your corners, you want to round your corners. So I'm going to do mine using this punch. You don't have to round your corners, it just looks pretty. Okay, so then what you want to do is where you've got your flap, you need to put tape on the inside. Okay, so that's where you've folded, those are your dents, and then at the back you've got bumpy bits. You need to put the tape on there. Okay. Get it central, you don't want it too close to the score line or too close to the edge. If it's too close to the score line, your lid won't close nicely, and if it's too close to the edge, it'll be sticking onto things it shouldn't be sticking to. So, there we go. So, now you get your box with all of that, and you turn it over to the back. Now, I turn mine on the side for lining up. You remove your tape. and you want to line that up so like I say it wants to go so that it will fold on the score line so don't put it too far down okay but not too high up either and um, you know just uh, have a very careful look and what you want to do is you want to center it so it's not going to fit exactly between those two score lines okay because I've made it ever so slightly larger so just you'll have to uh, center it by eye okay and it's just look top and bottom and make sure they've got a similar gap. They will just overlap that score mark ever so slightly. And then, oops, you just need to make sure you're over, slightly over the score line, which I wasn't, otherwise it won't close. Okay, take your time, there's no rush. Okay. Put it down lightly, make sure it closes like so. So then you know that you're good to give that a good press. Oh, I've forgotten a step. Sorry. 
before you glue it down sorry I totally forgot this step you just want to notch these you don't have to it just makes it tidier I completely forgot I do apologize so just cut a sliver up to the score line like that just looks neater then when you put your paper on I totally forgot I do I, I am sorry let me just peel that back okay so that you've got little triangular notches then when you lay your paper over you won't see that boxy edge that's the only reason it just it just looks neater okay all right so at this point you can do your mat and layering if you want I tend to do it when the box is together I don't know why um, but it's um, up to you let me think I think we'll do it now so for the back you want a piece that measures five and a quarter by four and five eighths so whilst you've got it on the back so this is the inside this is the back where well, you've just glued that on attach your paper so the papers are in part of the kit and I'm just using 120 GSM paper I'm just using a nice quality cardstock because you don't want it all splitting if you by using cheap cardstock it's a false economy um, and you still don't need to have very expensive cardstock but don't use the cheapest of the cheapest of the cheap okay so that will give you a one eighth of an inch border all the way around so just centralize it okay and that's that bit done okay and then for the front flap here this piece measure this piece measures two and three quarters by five and three eighths check the direction of it to make sure it's going to go facing the right way and then if you've rounded them you're going to need to round this okay so put your paper in now one tip if you've got a paper punch that doesn't like to punch out thin paper get a piece of scrap card like this put it underneath and punch both layers and then it will get you a need to finish if you're struggling just one little tip <laughs> okay mine's done it lovely now I've not inked if you want to you can ink around all of your box joins you can ink around your paper and um, because I wanted a nice crisp white look I've not done mine okay then add some glue anybody's interested I use Colal glue uh, it's more or less the same as Fabri-Tac or Beacon 3 and one but it's cheaper it does take slightly longer to dry but it's just as good I don't use PVA very often you know your white PVA and that's because um, I find that it makes you pay, can make your paper wrinkle and we don't want wrinkly paper it's not attractive it's really not okay so that's on there and then you can mat and layer these side pieces and I have cut my strips so these all measure one inch so if you want to mat and layer them you need strips that are three quarters of an inch long okay by the same length as these which were I've glued them down <laughs> I've glued them down with the measurements on let me re-measure it was it five and a quarter Right, this one needs to be slightly bigger. This one's five and three eighths, because this top bit's a little bit longer. So I'm just going to snip the white off. Okay, five and three eighths. So I'm going to have to get my big trimmer. So five and three eighths. One, two, three. Just remember, anything to do with the lid is going to need cutting ever so slightly larger than the rest because that's how I've designed it okay get that glued on I could fast forward this bit but I like to show the full process so bear with me and uh, it will be worth it because if you miss a step you might miss an important tip or an important point so make sure you watch all the way to the end before you start your project okay so that's that and then I'm just going to turn it around so it's in the right direction so these sections here are going to be if you cut them the same width as that one which was four and was it four and three quarters 
Um, let me look. Not quite. No, it wasn't Amanda. It was four and one, two, three, four and five eighths. Okay. Let me just trim the white bit off. Cut that to four and five eighths. I want it to be right. So you want two of those. Trim my white bits off. Four and five eighths is there. Okay. Let's move that away. And I will do the bottom as well, but I'll do that later. Just to save a little bit of time. Okay, so when we've done this, I'll show you how I've made the cards and the envelopes. You don't need a tutorial on because I've given you the envelope shape. All you need to do is cut it out and glue it together. That's that one. Just check the direction before you glue it. Make sure you're not gluing it upside down. Although with it being this kind of nice pattern, it's, it's not major if you glue it on upside down. I wouldn't throw a project away just because I'd glued my paper on upside down. It wouldn't matter. So that's all of our matting and layering done. Now I will say to you, if you're using wet glue, leave your project to dry before you construct the rest of your box. Okay? Just because it's more pliable and bendable whilst it's wet. Now I'm not going to be able to do that because obviously I'm filming. So another thing you can do is you can round these corners here, which are the inside flaps of the box here. So on my sample I did one rounded and one not rounded. Okay, um, I think I will round it. So I'll put it back in my punch. And round that one. It looks a little bit nicer, but it's not essential. If I can get it in my punch because of the where it's situated. Oh yes, I can. Okay, there we go. That's that bit done. Get rid of them. Right, so this is how we construct the box. So these flaps fold in here like so. Now I'm going to use tape. You can use glue, but it will take make longer for it to dry, obviously, and you'll have to sit there and hold it. So I'm using tape. Tape, so you fold the flaps in and you put in the, the tape on the kind of on the back of the flaps essentially. Kiddo. And it comes together pretty quickly once you've done the matting and layering. Um, that's probably the longest bit. So give your tape a bit of a rub with a bone folder to make sure it's down sticker. That way when you're lifting the backing off the hull, you know, it'll come off easier. Go in with a pokey tool and remove that. Okay. So, um, how did I do the front bit? Did I tape it or did I glue it? I think I glued it so that I've got wiggle room. So these are going to attach to, so you've got these two rectangles here. So this is going to fold up and they're going to attach to here. Okay. So these are attaching to there. So what you want to do is lift it up and you want to line this edge up against this edge. So you're lining that edge up against that edge like that. Line the edges up. Never mind the tab, line the edges up and then press the tab against it, okay? And the same at the other side. Line the edges up, it's the edges you want flush. Never mind the tab, the tab's just to stick it together, it's these two edges here you want flush. Okay, so then you've got that. Yeah? So then these flaps fold inwards like so and that just lifts up. And then you're just going to squeeze it into shape like that and attach that front piece to those like legs or wings. Okay. Now I did do mine with wet glue because you've just got room to wiggle and squeeze the box into shape. Because it might need coaxing into the right shape a little bit. So if you're adding glue, don't go right up to the edges and bear in mind not to protrude past one inches. Otherwise, um, you'll have a big spledgy mess. 
<laughs> you can use tape if you want, it's not a problem, I just like to have wiggle room on this bit. So I'm going to fold it over and I want it flush with the edge of that box again, okay? And then just bob my hand inside and press that wing upwards to meet it, okay? And the same at the other side, and just press, and that should dry pretty quickly, okay? And then that is your box. So then you can think of your closure. You can use Velcro if you like. You haven't got a massive gap there and there for magnets. So they need to be small magnets and small Velcro. You can punch holes in and wrap the ribbon through like I did. Or you can just literally get some ribbon like so. Okay. And tie it in a bow there. All right. So let's do the card. So the card base measures... It's five inches. This is rubbish card. This is splitty card. We don't want splitty card. Get in bin. <laughs> that was my cheap card. So this measures seven by five. Okay, put it in your scoreboard and don't just don't just do not just fold it in half and try and burnish it that way. You'll end up with wrinkles. It's really important to score. You'll get a nicer, cleaner look. Okay, so three and a half, that's half of seven, okay, and then you've got that nice neat score where you've told the paper where you want it to go and it will fold nicely. Okay, please don't just fold it in half without scoring it, it won't be attractive. Okay, right, so to decorate my card, I've got a month here from the kit printed out. Okay, and these measure three and a quarter by four and five eighths. That's the size you're looking for when you're trimming down. Then I've got myself a small strip. So I've tried to be really frugal with the papers so that we're not using loads. So all this is, is leftover strip from, you know, matting and layering that. And it measures one and a half by the length of the card, which is five. So all you need to do is glue that on. Again, use tape if you want. And you're looking for the centre of this card. Now, unless you want to start getting a pencil and ruler and measuring it. Which way up is it? Uh, that way. What I do is I get my card and I line it up so it's central in those grids. And then I look for the... So there's a little gap there and a little gap there, but it's central. Then I look for the middle point and I'll put point. I'm just trying to see which way up these flowers are meant to go. That way, I think. Yep. And I'm eyeballing it, but I'm just looking to see if there's even gaps. If you want to be really, really precise, you would get a ruler and a pencil and you would measure it. It's not that deep. It doesn't matter. It's just a little bit of decoration. You're not going to see that much of it. Then get your month of the year. And I've just done this on 120 GSM paper, like I've said. Cuts down on your costs. You don't have to have layers and layers and layers of card. These are designed to be a little, either little birthday cards or notelets to write in. Okay. And there we go. Just stick that on and that will just layer in there beautifully. It just fits nice. It's just perfect for the three and a half by five cards. So then you get all of your cards and your envelopes so you're going to need 12 envelopes now i've given you the envelopes to cut out patterned i've given you the template if you can't be bothered cutting 12 of those out it only takes about 10 minutes if you can't be bothered doing that you can if you've got an envelope punch board you could do it on there and look for the three and a half by five card size you're going to have more pa wasted paper doing it that way but it's up to you or you can, you can pre-buy small note card um, envelopes, but we're meant to be saving money. <laughs> we're meant to be saving money here, ladies and gents. No point going out and buying uh, when you can make. It just takes a little bit of time, okay? And then they all slide in, in our box that we've just made beautifully. And I've designed it so there's plenty of room at the top there, so it's not catching. There's a little bit of room in case you decide to do extra layering with cardstock, but they're not falling about, okay? So then you just get your ribbon. You can decorate the bottom of that with paper if you want. I've decided I like mine white. I think it looks prettier because then it makes 
um, the, this paper stand out. Get your ribbon, cut it to length. I hand dyed this ribbon. Um, just do the, just hand dye it if you can't find one you like the colour of, and you just literally tie it in a bow. You can add a stamped sentiment if you've got some stamp sets. Um, put a little stamp sentiment there, I didn't feel it was necessary. And then just trim your ribbons nicely. One going one way and one going the other. Don't have your tails too long. I'm just going to trim that one down a little bit. And there you go. Faff about with your bow for half an hour, making sure it looks perfect when in reality it doesn't matter. And there are your boxed note cards. Absolutely beautiful and it's a nice sturdy little box. So there you go, I hope that's helped and the next tutorial will be on, let me show you. The acetate window uh, envelope for the full calendar. So watch out for that one, hopefully that will be tomorrow. And uh, I will see you again very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Take care. And I'll see you very soon. Bye.